Welcome to the final part, part 10, of the SAP Activate Project Manager series. In this episode, we're focusing on the third and final transition path, the selective data transition. If you've made it this far, you already understand the ins and outs of new implementations and system conversions. Now it's time to master the approach that gives organizations the flexibility to mix, match, and modernize without starting from scratch. We'll start this episode by discussing the approach, reviewing the deliverables and activities, focusing only on the deliverables or activities that are different from the system conversion, and finally close the chapter by comparing the three transition approaches. Let's get into it. What is selective data transition? As the name suggests, selective data transition allows customers to move specific segments of their existing SAP ERP system to an SAP S4 HANA environment. This approach combines the stability of process reuse with the flexibility to redesign and innovate where needed. Think of it as a tailor-made journey. You might keep your logistics setup intact while redesigning finance or consolidate multiple systems into one streamlined S4 HANA instance. This approach is especially helpful when your business wants transformation but not disruption. In this depicted example of the selective data transition, the team created a shell copy of the first instance and carried out the system conversion of the copied instance. In the final step, the team uses the selective data transition approach to migrate the agreed upon data, which is based on the customer's functional or regulatory requirements, from all the instances and merge the configurations and the development work. You should consider selective data transition if, you need a phased go live instead of a big bang cutover. You're consolidating multiple ERP systems or splitting up environments. Your business only requires a subset of historical data, or you're looking to preserve stable processes while innovating others. It's ideal for organizations navigating complex operational landscapes or undergoing strategic changes, like mergers, acquisitions, or leadership shifts. Let's walk through the major project phases and the key deliverables. In the discover phase of the project, the team accesses the trial system to understand the innovations and the functionalities of the SAP S4 HANA system. In the prepare phase, apart from project kickoff and other project management activities, the team completes the setup and enablement activities, performs custom code analysis to identify any changes, retires unused code, modifies incompatible code, and provides high-level estimates of the changes. In the explore phase, the team sets up the sandbox environment from the current production, prod, environment, carries out the fit gap analysis, and prepares the product backlog based on the Delta design workshops. In the realize phase, the team completes the implementation, tests the converted solution and the data migration in the quality assurance, QA, environment, and migrates the selective data. During this phase, the team also creates the new prod environment. Finally, in the deploy phase, the team rehearses the production conversion and carries out the production conversion, data migration, go live, and hypercare. At the end of the deploy phase, the build team hands over the solution to the operate team to commence the run phase of the project. Selective data transition uses data management and landscape transformation, DMLT, services to move selective data from the current SAP ERP system to the new SAP S4 HANA environment. For the data transition, you can select a shell conversion, the team creates a copy of the existing prod environment without master and transactional data but includes the ABAP repository and configuration, client transfer, in this case, you select a client and the underlying master and transactional data with the configuration to transition to the target SAP S4 HANA environment, company code transfer, in this approach, you can select a company code from the current setup to create a single client on the new SAP S4 HANA system or system merge where you can merge business data from two or more clients to create an empty instance of SAP S4 HANA. You have the option of two approaches, mix and match approach. In this approach, the project team creates a new SAP S4 HANA installation and then transports or manually transfers the ABAP repository and configurations to the target environment. The other approach is the shell conversion where the team creates a shell copy of the current prod environment that includes the ABAP repository and the configuration without any master or transactional data. Let us talk about the landscape. The discover phase of the project starts with the trial system access to review the innovations and the fitment of current business requirements. The team then builds the sandbox environment by shell copying the existing prod environment. The team will use the sandbox system to drive the Delta design workshops in the explore phase of the project. In the second step, during the explore phase, 
you need to shell copy the sandbox environment to the SAP S4 HANA development dev environment. The project team will continue the configuration work based on the product backlog. In the next step, the project team creates the QA environment by shell copying from the dev environment. In the QA system, the team completes all the testing activities, including selective data migrations. The team should fix any bugs in the SAP S4 HANA dev environment and transport the fixes to the QA system for further testing. After successful completion of user acceptance testing, UAT, the team will shell copy the solution from the QA system to the PROD system and then perform the selective data migration from the existing prod environment to the new prod environment. Let's compare key differences between selective data transition and other paths. The prime difference between system conversions and selective data transitions is the use of tools. While you use Software Update Manager, SUM, for the system conversion and convert the data, you use DMLT for selective data transition and migrate the data. The selective data transition approach requires data migration of limited master and transactional data due to the consolidation of several systems or splitting into several systems. We can compare new implementations, system conversions and selective data transition using a number of characteristics. A few of them are 1. Process redesign. In the new implementations, you can redesign and re-engineer all processes, including the change in the organizational structure, whereas in the system conversion, you can't redesign the processes. However, if you consume further innovations, you can redesign those processes after system conversion. Selective data transition is in between the two approaches whereby you can redesign the processes to a great extent, including the possibility of the organizational structural change in the mix and match approach while the shell conversion presents limited possibility of process redesign. 2. Process reuse is the exact opposite of process redesign. For new implementations, you can't, and should not, reuse the existing processes, whereas you can fully reuse the existing processes in the case of system conversion. 3. Master, transactional data migration, for the new implementations, it's highly recommended to migrate only the master data and limited transactional data to the new environment. In the selective data transition approach, you can migrate the data selectively, so the indicator is set at possible to a great extent. 4. Data transformation and cleansing, in new implementations, with the new processes, the new data is transformed fully. In the system conversion, on the other hand, you use the same data with the change in data model. Both the options of selective data transition approaches present a great possibility of data transformation. For data cleansing, in new implementations, with the new processes, you get cleaned data. However, in the system conversion, the team can archive and cleanse the data prior to the implementation project. The selective data transition also presents a great possibility of cleansed data. 5. Target S4 HANA system, a customer can choose any platform, on-premise SAP S4 HANA, SAP S4 HANA Cloud, Extended Edition, or SAP S4 HANA Cloud, Essentials Edition, for the new implementations. However, in system conversion, SAP S4 HANA is the only target platform. You can select either SAP S4 HANA Cloud, Extended Edition, or SAP S4 HANA Cloud as the target platform for both the approaches of the selective data transition. The selective data transition path is about balance. It empowers businesses to retain what works, enhance what doesn't, and control the pace of change. It's nuanced, complex, and incredibly powerful when used in the right scenario. Using an example of a global manufacturer that wants to modernize finance but keep their logistics intact. Using a shell conversion, they can create a sandbox, conduct fit gap workshops, migrate only the needed data, and ultimately adopt innovations in finance while preserving existing logistics processes. This approach gives them transformation with minimal operational risk. That wraps up our 10-part series on the SAP Activate Project Manager journey. We've covered the three transition paths in depth, explored key deliverables, and connected theory to real-world execution. Thanks for joining me. Now go out there and activate your SAP project with confidence. Do please let me know in the comment section what you think about the video and what other training subjects and videos you would like to see me cover and publish. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share. Also, please remember to turn on notifications so you can know when the next video series drops.